this one, I'm going to start with a two and a half inch wide strap I cut off of a piece of about seven ounce leather. Um, and I don't have a special tool really for putting round ends on these straps. I'm just going to, or at least not a strap this size. So I'm just going to use wing divider and set it about right. And mark a round end to cut. That little spot in the center won't be much trouble because I'm going to be stitching these together somehow in there. One of them's got to be overlapped anyway, and I can just use it to mark the other one. mentioned but this needs to be 60 inches long well, that's five feet I've got a 48 inch long stick here oh, got a little bit of a curve in this strap right up here it's gonna be right about there where we cut it off so it should be fine Just lay our strap back on itself here so we can, like I said, mark that this end. I can get the whole thing to stay out of y'all's way there. This is a long strap, so it's going to hold a ridiculous amount of 4570 ammo. Um, and pretty much, there's not much to it. All I have to do pretty much is sew a bunch of cartridge loops. But we'll finish up some edges first. We'll, or at least we'll bevel our edges, get everything ready to go, and mark a line in here so I've got a sort of decorative element. And then we'll get to the cartridges. Now, just wetting this down a little bit so that I can put some creases around the edge with the wing divider. And also it'll make everything uh, for marking it a little bit easier. I'm probably not going to line this, so I'm not doing a stitching groove all the way around. Uh, if I do line it, it's going to be with suede or something like that, so it doesn't slide as bad. Uh, if you line it with a smooth leather, it's going to slip and slide around a little bit too easy. But as I said, probably not going to line it. All right, we're going to start probably up about oh, six, eight inches up on each end. For the cartridge loops. Six inches would be about there. And 
and the same on this side come up about six inches that's a very arbitrary number it doesn't matter you could start anywhere as long as you got enough room for these two pieces to cross and they're not at a, an exact 90 degree angle it's almost more like a 45 um, or something similar to that but you can see we've got a rounded in just in still match up real nice right there that's why I went with round instead of just cutting them off at whatever you could also just cut lay these over each other and just cut straight lines and make it go to a point but then that point's gonna roll or twist up on you um, I like rounded better but anyway so from there it's just gonna be marking a lot of places that we're gonna sew cartridge loops on and for that I have um, this handy little fellow that I put together basically this is the width of the loops on this part and this length is what you need for the loops each loop to go over the cartridges and it needs to be out about this weight leather about four ounce leather uh, for this particular one to work now the reason I mention that is because if you use thicker leather then you're gonna have to make this just a little bit longer to go around the cartridges and you got to experiment with that a little bit but in this case I'm running right about an inch and a quarter just a little over it and almost three quarters of an inch wide Again, just kind of just a little bit under three quarters of an inch and I came up with this just through experimentation just um, basically I made some cartridge loops by stitching one side wrapping it over and pulling it down tight over a cartridge stitching the other side and then cutting it off and seeing how wide it was and then um, the length between the stitches so as it from here on out we're just going to take this and we're just going to use it to mark where we're going to put our stitching for our cartridge loops and like I said narrow distance on this one and there's going to be a lot of these okay and I was marking these I wound up with 62 cartridge loops which I decided was a weird number so I went ahead and added on two more on this side and one more on this side uh, because that one has got the spot in it and I want to make that the back and cover that up so it looks pretty good with this and uh, decide that gives me 65 cartridge loops which I decided was a much better number um, any since this one's hiding behind the other one it actually I could have gone further down even on this front one I can't go much further down on this back one because I'm gonna start hitting that with the cartridges but anyway so those are marked and the next step is to mark the straps that's going to be the actual cartridge loops themselves now I went with an inch and a quarter wide strap that I cut off of a four ounce four to five ounce piece of leather and I went with that because that's about half the cartridge width it's going to cover quite a bit of it you can go narrower you can go wider it depends on what you want it to look like of course if you're going smaller cartridges you want to go narrower um, but in general like I said it seems like about half the cartridge width is really a kind of a good number as far as I'm concerned so from there same thing I have to wet this down start marking it um, you might also consider if you're trying to do this for somebody that does cowboy shooting or something where their uh, time period of their persona is because um, a lot of earlier gun belts had wider cartridge loops so even like a like a regular 45 Colt might have had an inch wide cartridge loop or even an inch and quarter like this that covered pretty much the entire brass cartridge so on the cartridge loops let's go ahead and start marking them and before I do I'm gonna cut off I've got a clamp mark there from the leather and we'll just cut that basically straight that's yeah, not quite straight uh, let's cut it just a little closer to straight 
There we go. And then we're going to cut the corners off. Just clip off a little bit there right at the uh, corner. I like doing that so again my corners don't wind up kind of pointing out as the leather gets worn. And from there we can start marking our stitch lines across these straps. Now as I mentioned before, my little cartridge loop guide here. Now I go with the long ways on it. There it is. Going with the stylus. There it is. So I'm going to go about me eh, 3 sixteenths, quarter of an inch from that edge. And that's going to be where I want to start my cartridge loops across here. And then I'm just going to mark all the way down and I'll keep count of these. Actually, I'll probably count them later. Um, and make sure that I have enough to do 65 cartridge loops out of the two straps that I cut out. We'll see. All right, now that I got them all marked all the way along, uh, I got 41 of them on one strip and 24 of them on the other. I could mark some more on this one and just even them up and have, uh, you know, something closer to the midpoint. But it really doesn't matter because I'll just overlap these pieces wherever they overlap. But yeah, I just go ahead and cut that off. Again, a little bit past that last stitch line that I've marked there. And take the corners off when I get to the end. Now I'm not sure how much it really matters because they don't interact with the person very much, but it doesn't hurt to bevel these pieces as well. Um, it'll make the cartridges slide in and out of it a little easier if you bevel the back side of it. And you can smooth it out a little bit and just give it a more finished sort of feel and look. Throw some leather dye on these pieces and then come back tomorrow and put them all together. Um, as usual, I'm going to use uh, Phoebe's oil dye or pro dye, they're calling it now. Um, this one's going to be light brown, one of my favorite colors. And I use sheep wool scraps to apply it. That's why I've got the gloves out. Because you can cover a large area fast with sheep wool. And in my experience, the faster you can cover a piece of leather with dye, the more even of a coat you're going to get on it. Doesn't hurt that sheep wool holds a lot of dye and you can really get your projects done fast. Okay, let's go ahead and throw some clear finish on this. My usual favorite clear, uh, is acrylic resin. And then I'm going to mark some more spots on here that will help me when I go to stitch it together. Okay, now normally I sew these by hand. I sew the cartridge loops on, and that's just taking a, a diamond chisel, punching holes here, punching a line of holes here, and they will line themselves up as you stitch them together, basically. Uh, you want this piece wet while you're stitching it uh, so that they can bend enough. But this one, I don't really want to do 65 loops by hand, so I'm going to do this on a machine. And as you can see, while you're li trying to line it up, these cover each other, and you can't see that you're lined up real well. And under a machine, that can be a bit of a pain. So I'm going to actually take and put marks on either side, and I've actually 
set this to a width so I get them about the same distance from each edge. And it's about where the stitches are going to be as they come out on this. And then I can line up between those two dots and see where I'm at um, while I'm stitching. So I'm just going to do that all the way down. And basically just each of these lines that I've got in there at the end of them, put a mark. All right. Now that I've got everything marked up, all the leather dyed and finished, I'm actually going to finish the edges before I stitch it together, uh, before I have everything in the way. So I'm just going to put some gum drag on those edges, and then I'm going to use a canvas scrap to burnish it. Let's make this a little quicker. rolling our strap up a bit. Basically anything that provides friction can smooth out an edge. Um, and that's why canvas scraps work really well for long straps like this. Uh, but you can just of course go with a regular edge slicker and just work your way all the way around. Just doesn't go quite as fast. And we'll do the same thing with our pieces for our uh, cartridge loops. Just roll them up, put some drum drag on the edges. and slick them with the canvas scraps just to make everything feel nice and smooth. All right, now down here at the sewing machine, I've got uh, this strap, the um, actual cartridge loop strap, I've got wet down. The other strap is still dry. And I'm going to start stitching these on here. And as I go, I've got a couple um, action-proving snap caps, action-proving dummies for 4570 here that I'm going to use to shape the loops as I'm going. That's why the strap's wet. That and to be able to make it a little easier to line up. Now, we're going to start in reverse, kind of in the middle of the strap. And stitch until we go off the edge. And then we're going to go forward. Again, stitch until we go off the edge. Now I could just each one keep going back and forth, or you can do basically a zigzag sort of pattern. If you lift your uh, pressure foot out of the way, also why it's wet, so I can do this. Let's go ahead and actually finish that stitch up. And we can kind of step to the side. And back in a little bit. And then we can reverse up. Until we get to our spot up here. And then we line up the next line on our cartridge loops. Oop, I go forward. Every so often you can go ahead and put your uh, 
cartridges or in this case snap caps in and shape the loops and round them out and then just sort of move them down the line as you need them uh, but otherwise it's just going to be a whole lot more of this alternately instead of all the forward and forward and reverse and back and forth and so on you can also just keep spinning your strap around you still have to pull this out of the way and you can see where you're going a little bit better um, I've also seen straps done like this where they will stitch down this side then across the loop then they stitch down this side then across the loop and just kind of back and forth like that as well um, I prefer stitching diagonally across the back which I've also seen done quite a bit And one thing, at least on this sewing machine, um, anytime you do a pivot like that, a violent change of direction, you want to leave the needle down, but it should just be starting to move up. Um, otherwise, you could wind up with a big loop of thread on the back that causes all sorts of problems as it gets hung up in the machine and breaks the thread, causes trouble. Um, now having reached the end of my first strap and needing to start the second one, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this on and then stitch the other one on directly over top of it. Rather than trying to get all three of them, the back piece, this piece, the other piece, all lined up at the same time. Just gonna shuffle through here. Grab our other piece. Yeah, we're a little closer on this end. And our zigzags on the back are gonna show that we put our piece in here, but in my experience, people don't really pay much attention to that. Now our zigzags are going to go a different direction. One last loop here. We'll back stitch over that again. Lock it in at the end. And before I shape all these loops, we're going to go ahead and stitch our piece together. these to come together again it doesn't need to be particular but it's not a 90 degree angle 90 degree angle would probably work I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together 
something like this. Grab my threads there. Make ourselves a little teardrop sort of shape here. Well, that's pretty much it for this project. I'm just going to go around and use a lighter to uh, take these little fuzzy bits. And kind of smooth them down. And of course I'm going to try to shape all the loops and make sure they're all at least fit a 4570 round. And that's what the snap caps are really good for. Just go around and put them in all the loops all the way around and check that they're gonna fit now I don't have any 4570 myself but what I do have that I can put in here to help shape them is I've got some 410 shot shells that are brass and I may go around and do that just for taking a picture of it full of brass